Uh, hello, everyone. My clock says it's uh, a quarter to 11 now, <coughs> so let's start. I'm Thorsten Lehmhus. I think you know uh, why you're here and who I am. So I'm basically the regression packer for the Linux kernel, and uh, I want to cover a few topics uh, around that um, and um, mainly focus on, on uh, workflow issues. Uh, that are causing regression, but before going into that, uh, let me start by, um, um, oh, I need to, uh, um, need to f uh, keep two, uh, two laptops in sync uh, f to see my notes. Um, and uh, start by uh, d briefly describing what has been discussed on the maintainer summit uh, two days ago where I was invited. Uh, the long discussion can actually be found on LWNnet. Uh, Jonathan here actually uh, did the hard work and uh, uh, summarized everything and it's online for two hours now. I didn't even check yet. I just saw it uh, before, uh, 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 20 minutes ago, but I think it will be great and it uh, will be more in, in depth than what I'm telling here. And. Um, um, some of this uh, stuff that um, was dis dis uh, 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 decided is way too, 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 um, too complex to discuss it here, to bring it up here. Ah, ah crap. So, and uh, so the, the brief, uh, <coughs> brief summary is uh, a lot, lot was discussed and nothing was discussed. Um, but, but there are a few outcomes. Um, it was well, good, good discussions and, um, and um, what we actually agreed on, for example, was that uh, Linus is willing to act some, some docs describing what's expected from maintainers. That's one of the pain points I had, um, that um, um, maintainers had different expectations and developers how regression should be handled and the uh, workflow issues we get to later will show that. And uh, Linus... Uh, wants to make sure uh, that everybody is on the same page there, and, and uh, w which helps me also to get some some backing from him, uh, without uh, actually um, involving in him in every discussion uh, where I need need some backing. Uh, Linus also clarified that he wants um, um, basically everything from the current cycle fixed by RC6 to make uh, one week or two weeks where uh, uh, yeah two weeks regularly. To, to uh, fix uh, last last minute issues. So basically, if there's uh, something that's uh, fixable by revert, then uh, try to either fix it uh, through a re uh, <coughs> proper fix or get a revert in by RC6. That may, that is what Linus wants. Yeah. He also want, uh, made clear that he uh, wants regression fixed more quickly if they uh, hit an, uh, um, a version deemed for end users. So either a new mainline release or um, um, uh, if they were backported to stable releases, because um, sometimes we right now have the problem that um, um, maintain, uh, de developers say, okay, we're waiting till the end of the, the <coughs> development cycle to fix this. Uh, so hopefully some improvements are forthcoming there. And he also makes, made clear that um, uh, having fixes in Next is not that important uh, for, for regression fixes. I mean, yeah, it's a bit hard to summarize. He, uh, definitely, it's a good idea to have them in there for at least a day or two to give the CIs a chance to process this and to um, <coughs> check a few issues that's coming up. But if it's a simple fix, it, uh, sub, uh, it likely is also a good, uh, uh, possible to, to send it straight to him to get the regression fixed and make sure people can test it. Yeah. That's it about um, um, the two maintainer submit two, two days ago. Uh, as I said, if you want uh, more details, check out the LWNet article. And if you don't have a subscription, which you should have, uh, uh, write me an email and I send you a, a, a link for, for, uh, to assess it. Uh, but it will be free in a, in a week or two anyway. Yeah. So Rexbot, uh, that's the next topic. That's my regression tracking, tracking bot that I'm basically using to, to keep, it, keep track of regressions. I'm not using a proper bug, uh, bug tracker because that would mean the developers and maintainers would have to, to interact with it and uh, nobody, uh, a lot of people don't want that. What it basically does, it, it connects, um, I add uh, reports uh, to, the, to the Rexbot and then Rexbot looks out for uh, commits or patches sent to the list uh, that basically link back to the uh, uh, to the report through a link or a closes tag, and then I know if there's progress to fixes or if the, if the fix is landed. So ideally, it should be mostly automatic and without overhead for the actually devel developers. The thing is, I, uh, the development is halted, kind of. Uh, it happened uh, slowly a few months ago that uh, part of the problem were a few uh, funding issues. Uh, the other problem was also that uh, regression tracking, keeping 
staying on top of all those regressions and um, uh, making sure everything is in the databases uh, is kind of act accurate. Took a lot, a lot of effort also, um, but um, we discussed the funding issues, and so things hopefully should get better soon. And um, um, <coughs> there, so there, the, the future. Um, is a, a bit better, yeah. There are also a few features that are not widely announced yet, but that are working and I'm using it already. For example, um, Rexbot can now, uh, besides uh, uh, monitoring uh, Baxilla and um, the regular list, uh, can also track reports that are happening in GitLab and GitHub. Uh, that's, for example, important for the DR uh, DRM subsystem, so the graphics drivers, because they're tracking the issues in um, in a GitLab instance on freedesktop.org. And uh, GitHub is, for example, uh, important for sound open firmware that's uh, using GitHub. And uh, yes, you might wonder why, why do I need another tracker to, to keep track of that? Yeah, so basically uh, to, to check if the subsystems also track issues uh, or uh, take care of regressions as, as they are supposed to. So I'm a bit of a cop and uh, uh, look, keeping, keeping on things from the overall perspective. Yeah, um, but that way I can track these this issues also now, and the Baxilla uh, support improved through that also. Um, it's now also possible to update Rexbot data without replying to the report. Normally, Rexbot uh, recognizes any any commands you send to the to the report in a reply or on, in a back ticket, back ticket. But to make bulk updates, it's not possible to say Rexbot report and uh, put a URL behind it, and then you can update the title or other things or telling. Rexbot that the fix is in, but uh, just like the closes or uh, uh, link tag to the report. <coughs> there are also a few quality of life improvements. Um, like uh, for, um, some of them are, are not that important for here, but they are important to make my life easier. A few more are needed, like making it easier to forward issues from uh, Baxilla, because uh, quite a few developers don't care much about Baxilla and don't go there. But uh, that's in the works and mostly finished already. Um, the thing is, there are quite a few um, um, kind of important issue of things that uh, would be really useful to make uh, Rexport more usable for, for other people. Um, um, that's kind of stalled right now, uh, but hopefully will happen uh, sooner or later. It's like adding, uh, for example, a, um, a patch to the tracking while uh, um, uh, uh, proposing a, p a patch to fix this. That, uh, so that to make that possible through just one command right now, you need a few of them. That's a bit annoying, and uh, that should make it a little bit easier for everyone. But uh, that's that's on the to-do list. Yeah. Um, what's really missing is um, our subsystem-specific views into track regressions. Um, uh, that's uh, still on the uh, on the agenda. Um, that's something a lot of people ask for, um, but and will definitely happen sooner or later. Um, it's a uh, really long overdue, but maybe it's a good thing because uh, right now Rexbot still has uh, is a kind of side pro project. It's not really perfect, and I'm not not a good really good programmer, so that's. Uh, um, uh, it, it might be a good thing to not uh, expose it too much to the subsystems, otherwise they would start uh, uh, to hate regression tracking. So a bit more polishing from my side uh, might be there. But uh, sooner or later that will happen, for example, for subsystems that want to keep, uh, keep a closer look on their sub-subsystems, sub -sub uh, like uh, network tree uh, maintainers that might want to, to keep an eye on, on the Bluetooth or, or wireless uh, maintainers. Yeah. Um, what's still missing is better interaction with CIs. There are some some things that the kernel CI people use for the lifetime tracking, uh, where they rely on Rexbot. But there's a lot of things that could be done there. Um, but as I said, right now it's uh, kind of stalled. But hopefully, we get uh, back on track there in, in the future, and uh, we see something there. And uh, there are quite of other other small features I won't bore you with here uh, that people uh, would like. Yeah. Uh, as I said, uh, development st uh, <coughs> stalled kind of due to lack of funding and um, and uh, uh, at, uh, all the time the regression tracking it takes. Maybe remains to be seen how that works out in the future. Maybe I get uh, back on be uh, better on track or uh, um, uh, to to reduce the load of tracking itself. Uh, um, 
causes because if, if um, <coughs> developers, for example, would use link and closes tags more often to uh, to link back to the reports, with, which is something that Linus actually wants, that would make my life a lot easier because right now I often have to, to uh, 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 fix the many regressions, uh, track regressions up because that's th those tags are forgotten. That will always happen, but the amount is really a bit much. Yeah. Uh, so the future looks, it, it, it will get better, but it's not something that's really going forward at, at a great pace. It's, it's more slowly. Yeah. <clears throat> so why do regressions happen? That's a complicated topic, obviously, and the uh, most obvious answer, as you all know, we are all, all humans, and uh, even kernel developers are humans, and they make errors. Uh, that happens, and uh, there's nothing much you can do about it. And the other problem, uh, especially for the kernel, the kernel is mainly drivers. I don't know how many percentage. It also depends on, on how you count. So it's uh, basically impossible to run a CI farm that tests everything because uh, yeah, you would need a gi gigantic uh, test farm to do that. For example, I once had the same notebook, based nearly the same notebook that, Li that Linus has, and he had a regression with the display and uh, I didn't see on, 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 on my, my system because he had the more the higher resolution display and for, th for him nothing worked with the graphics towers and for me everything worked at the same time with mainline. That just, happen, just happens in the, uh, when you deal with drivers and hardware and uh, it's impossible to, do, to test in, um, in the real life in a CI farm because you would uh, need a huge gigantic farm and uh, uh, lots of people to take care of. That's basically impossible. So it needs also uh, 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 testers that can uh, can uh, 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 test mainline. That's actually, uh, if you want to help uh, avoiding regressions, uh, what I would like to ask you, if you um, if you want to help uh, making the the kernel better. Um, give uh, at least mainline RC once a try to see if anything is broken and if if there's anything broken, uh, report it quickly because that way it can be fixed, especially as the, some of those changes might already be heading to a stable kernel uh, at that point. Um, so then that still gives time to prevent that from happening uh, from regressions entering, entering stable kernels. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, and the, the thing is that take fixing regressions in mainline sometimes takes a bit long. And um, I'm getting out of sync here with, uh, with my notes. Sorry. Um, that's also a reason why more people are exposed to regressions than, than needed. Um, and that's so, uh, why it's uh, that way. It's uh, multiple small issues that uh, we'll, we'll get back to later in the wor uh, workflow part. So I won't bore you uh, here with it. And, um, uh, but in the end, yeah, it, it exposes more people than necessary to the problems because it takes too long to fix them. <coughs> and uh, uh, resolving that, then there's no silver bullet to solve it, but because it, oh, those are multiple small issues and uh, that, that each on their own they look like nothing important and no nothing that should cause a big deal, but together they, they add up and uh, result uh, or, or sometimes create uh, delays from multiple weeks and, yeah. Uh, that annoys uh, uh, testers and uh, blocks the eyes from testing. Yeah. Um, where, where I can say more about regressions, why they are happening, is uh, the stable kernel sometimes. <coughs> um, so basically, uh, which regularly uh, backports changes from, from mainline to, to, uh, to stable releases like uh, 6.10.8 uh, or 9. I don't know where we are currently from the top of my head. And some, that has multiple small issues as well because, for example, the stable team has no issues to track, um, uh, to, uh, to t test their, their kernels just like subsystems do because uh, stable development is basically independent and also maintained sep separately by Greg, who was uh, here a few months, moments ago and sitting here somewhere. And, but he can't run, run to, uh, um, the stable kernel RCs he's, he proposed through the, the uh, subsystem specific CIs or the uh, test subsystem maintenance usually run because they are not, not public. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, uh, why um, regressions sometimes happen. Another reason is um, that the stable team is un unable to reliably detect the fixes that are worth back backporting from those that should be ignored. A lot of people say, hey, the, the stable team should not backport so many fixes uh, in, in the first place. I don't, don't think that's the real issue, the real solution to the problem. 
um, because yeah, those fixes are fixing things and uh, it's uh, likely um, uh, needed to do. And um, it, it's, it's best for us all, all likely, but that's a complicated topic and uh, leave those, those discussions to, to Greg, he can deal with it. Um, but I think he's, he's not totally wrong. And, and, what, and another thing some people often say is that uh, uh, Greg should only backport um, changes that are tagged for stable backporting. Uh, but there's a big problem here, Contri uh, uh, participation in stable kernel maintenance and the stable tag is, actually, uh, is totally optional. So mainline developers don't have to care about it. That's why they don't tag a lot of fixes for backporting. And uh, that's why you can't just rely on it. So the, the tag for backporting is just basically a hint that that really should be backported and uh, everything else with a fixes tag is um, also likely worth backporting. Um, but for those uh, developers or maintainers that don't know, there is actually a, 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 a solution to prevent backporting. If you ever uh, have a reason uh, for, for a commit with a fixes tag, uh, check out the uh, stable kernel roots document uh, either online or on the, the kernel sources. Uh, there is a tag to tell the scripts that Greg and Sasha uses, uh, use for the stable uh, maintenance to say, hey, this fix shouldn't be backported, at least not automatically. And... Um, that's documented for a few months now. Yeah. And the stable team is unable also to um, um, distinct fix fixes that are worth prioritizing from those that better should be delayed. Uh, that's uh, mainly a problem right after the merge window when you often see releases like uh, 6.9.3, I think it was, with 800 uh, um, uh, uh, fixes um, and um, a lot of people complain about them because uh, some of them cause... Um, Regressions, um, but yeah, given the amount of changes, that's naturally natural. I actually checked if um, um, I did some stats and uh, looked closer if um, the amount of regressions those changes cause is bigger than the rest of the time. So uh, outside of the merge window, in the end, it didn't make much of a difference. Uh, the only problem is that yeah, the big amount of, of uh, uh, <coughs> changes are uh, are what's causing more issues for for people. And what, from my perspective, would be, uh, would be great if uh, more mainline developers could tell uh, Greg through, through a tag that's also uh, documented for a, few, uh, for a while now to only backport the changes uh, that are merged through the merge window a, a little bit later. Um, so that's basically uh, using a stable tag, tag and uh, telling that um, it only should be backported after RC th RC3. So to delay um, uh, people uh, uh, to delay backporting like two weeks and or, or even longer to give people a chance to to actually test those commits in, in mainline and report um, regressions uh, before that uh, as then uh, um, uh, backporting can actually prevent it by because right now it's often some of the commits are actually backported within three days or something, and uh, that often doesn't leave enough time to to report uh, uh, problems or and and prevent backporting because bisecting and everything takes long longer, especially after the merge window with all those ten thousand or more changes. Um, yeah, that's why I'm coming right now. This, that that uh, those changes are backported rather quickly, but because there's no distinction pack, uh, possible because uh, for those that are urgent and not urgent, uh, I can understand why uh, Greg is doing doing it like that. Um, um, yeah, that's how it is and how we have to deal with the reality we, we live in. Um, the stable team also has no easy way from, from the workflows to, to see if a, a patch is part of a patch set that also occasionally leads to, to, uh, to problems in stable kernels. So if they pick uh, just uh, one, um, one uh, commit and uh, leave out others from the same patch set that can cause uh, regressions in stable, um, that's how it is. And um, the tag I used earlier can help to prevent that, but at Again, that requires co um, uh, coordination and help from the mainline developers, and they often don't care much about stable, and they don't have to because that's uh, how it is in the uh, Linux kernel project. Yeah, and there's also no way for the stable team to detect if fixes impl uh, implicitly depend on on earlier changes that were mainlined earlier. Um, the the tech I briefly mentioned earlier can help that, but again, it requires uh, uh, co coordination from the developers. That brings me to the workflow problem parts, so the main part of the talk. <coughs> and uh, the important thing I need to know, need to say here, 
Um, most developers are doing a great job, so really thank, thanks for that. And uh, most kernel uh, maintainers are doing a hell of a job. So uh, it's a really thankless job and often hard time to, to find, uh, hard for them to find time for the upstream work. There are also priorities set by the employers and conflicts of interest, so maybe the, uh, the, the, the um, Employer doesn't want uh, kernel developers to contribute to stable kernels, for example. That's one of the reasons why it's op optional, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's really doing a hell of a job. Many thanks for that. And many thanks for everyone that helping here, investing their time. Deepest re respect there. Uh, nevertheless, I want want to bring a few issues up. I don't want to criticize anyone in particular here or any subsystem. It might feel might be that some subsystems are mentioned or that some subsystems are. Uh, know that I'm talking about them, just ignore it. I, I just want to talk about the, the issues um, uh, we have in general because it's, a, it's an old and historically uh, grown process and uh, sometimes it's uh, important to take a step back and um, check if those issues are, are, if the process is still working and um, if it should be changed and uh, some change always is something people fear and that might mean more work. Uh, but it's really uh, something we need to discuss because not discussing changes or, or bringing up issues that uh, can, as I say, uh, I think that can lead to, to downfall of empires. So it's really something uh, I want to uh, uh, talk about here freely and uh, not without uh, any, any uh, uh, even if, if it means it could, could mean more, more work for, for maintainers that are already burnt out, burnt out or the, uh, also, Maybe we can find uh, um, problems there. So, workflows are the biggest enemy. That was the title. <coughs> it boils down, uh, down to basically one thing: that uh, there is no workflow um, for for uh, uh, handling regressions. There's supposed to be a smiley there with a, a wobbly face. Uh, it seems a big blue button lost that on the, on the uh, conversation. Sorry for that. And um, yeah. Because the thing is, every, all the developers and maintainers uh, basically um, work with different interpretations from Mails lin Linux sent to the Linux kernel mailing list. And uh, not even that, it, um, uh, there's something missing here. They don't even saw, or everybody saw the same subset of, of LCAM L mails. So everybody works from different mails uh, and uh, different interpretations from that. And uh, mixed with a combination of rules um, that are either global or subsystem specific and um, official or unofficial or, uh, and even some that are written or unwritten and that's not even enough bec uh, because some of those are, th are then even outdated and um, uh, some even contradicting each other. Yeah, that creates a mess uh, where <coughs> everybody works, uh, has different expectations, and that makes my wo work as regression tracker uh, especially hard because when I, I, I brought them to do something, they say, hey, I'm doing it right, you got it wrong, and that leads to long, long discussion. But that's one of the things um, we discussed on the Maintainer Summit. Uh, things are hopefully get better uh, in that regard, and um, yeah, for, for this, uh, the slide here, the important thing is also right to, for you to keep uh, in mind that um, regression uh, developers right now don't even need to take uh, into account if uh, the regressions made it into a stable release, uh, either directly or indirectly, but that's also uh, hopefully to get better after the discussion we had two days ago. So let me illus illustrate the problem we have with the audience. If, uh, um, if there are a few kernel developers are around, which I expect, say a patch is merged for um, 6.10 RC1, and two days after the RC1, as someone reports, causes a regression. A straightforward fix is posted, reviewed, and merged uh, to a subsystem tree, and um, right before um, RC4 comes out, and um, yeah. Should it be um, uh, sent to Linux for fol on the following Friday for uh, um, 6.10 RC5? Who here is a kernel developer? Please put your hands up. Yeah, and leave it up. Leave it up. So I guess everybody thinks, yeah, that should be sent. Yeah. <laughs> take, now take it down. Did you already take, everybody take, take it down? That, don't you, th should it be sent to, should it uh, a patch? 
for a fix from the previous cycle be sent to Linux at that point? No kernel de developer here? Oh, one, two, one, two, one and a half? Yeah. The slides get even worse. Um, for example, if it uh, passed RC6, or uh, even past RC7, so basically right before the final, or even uh, uh, RC, uh, if it uh, it's a, uh, a, a release that was uh, in the past year. So everybody that would have his hands up to this point up would be right, and at, at only at this point it would become uh, a, a bit vague because uh, that we had such an issue that was a few months ago that uh, uh, was an, uh, also an, um, an issue from a, uh, an earlier cycle right before release, and uh, there we brought Linus in and he uh, really stated, yes, I want this fix, that was a wi wireless issue, uh, um, get into the tree, that I think it was on, on Friday right before the the, the final, uh, I want to pick this up to get make sure this is fixed and doesn't get into another release. And um, he clarified that's obviously a, a time limit. Um, for example, if, if the, um, uh, uh, the regression is older than a year and or uh, 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 could lead easily to other dis uh, uh, regressions, um, then it should be uh, merged uh, uh, or queued for the next merge window. Uh, but uh, yeah, nearly all the other stuff um, uh, should be um, um, maintained in a uh, current window unless it's really dangerous. And that's one of the things many, many kernel developers don't know. And uh, that's why I think we need uh, not only written guidelines, but also make sure they are uh, uh, known by people. And that's uh, basically, I guess, my job for the next few years that will be fun. But uh, yeah, once I have something from Linux in, in written form, that should make, make things a lot easier. Yeah. But to say something positive as well, a lot of regressions, uh, despite the lack of agreed on and um, written gu guidelines, are handled quite well. A lot of developers are investing a lot of time, private time, or time on the weekend, so it's, it's really great. And uh, many regressions are fixed within one, two, or three weeks, which is basically, the, there was supposed to be a happy smiley there. Um, uh, so um, that, that's good. Uh, op op Three weeks, I think that's usually a, a good time. Normally, I, I would prefer two, but it, it depends on, on the fix. Uh, and uh, if, it, if it's something that bothers mon many people or if it's a corruption issue, yeah. But we also have a few um, um, uh, regressions where it takes easily three months to get it fixed. I've seen a quite, few, quite a few of those. And that uh, are never uh, fixed in the series where they got introduced. They have something, a, a regression that was... Uh, uh, made it into 6.9 right before the release, uh, might never be fixed in the stable series, uh, in the 6.9 se stable series, and only get fixed for 6.10 or something. I've seen those, and that's uh, kind of annoying from my point for a project uh, that says no regressions because users expect, expect more of us. Yeah. So um, um, there is uh, some, uh, 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 some room for improvement, even if some regressions um, uh, are handled well. Uh, but there is no silver bullet. Um, it's um, caused by mu multiple I uh, issues, and uh, describing those um, requires me to get into the detail. There, we, there, where I'm coming up with yet another example that's even more complicated and that will be modified here. That's uh, basically a, a patch is merged for 6.7, uh, 6.10 RC1. Quickly after that. Um, Someone reports a regression that can co can be reverted, uh, 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 where we'll revert is able to fix that. And um, yeah, in uh, this case here, uh, a proper fix is, for, uh, is uh, developed within a day or two, and uh, also uh, quickly makes it into next, and uh, is even committed to a subsystem tree, and uh, gets sent to Linux uh, with with in a week. So basically, it's fixed by RC2. That's actually what quite a few subsystems manage quite quite often. Um, and I named a few on, on, on the maintainer summit. I don't want to go into the details here. Um, uh, so as I said, uh, um, frequently, uh, or not frequently, sometimes it really works out as well. Sometimes it takes uh, a, a little bit longer. For example, if the fix uh, uh, needs to be some more time to get reviewed, then, then it might be, uh, uh, take a second week. Uh, that's also fine. 
Uh, as I said, when it's um, starting to become three weeks, I slowly get nervous and a bit of annoyed, especially if mul multiple people uh, report it, but it's also okay. Um, but, uh, uh, for example, if this, uh, uh, the fix just stays in, in uh, uh, the next tree for, for one and a half weeks and misses in another RC release, that's kind of annoying. And if it takes then four weeks, uh, um, th I think that's too long. And um, even if it's m some, some fixes just stay for two weeks in next for more than two weeks, and then we, we get up to five weeks to, to get, get the reaction solved, that's basically too long. And that's even something uh, Linus agrees on uh, is, to, uh, is not great. Uh, that's why he, for example, in the uh, latest cycle for 6.11 uh, for RC6, Q, uh, um, pulled a few pi uh, fixes that Günther had prepared in his own tree. And um, he was bypassing the maintainers as they didn't pick up or review the, 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 the fixes. And uh, back then he wrote a mail about it uh, where he said he was hoping that would be a, a one-time one event uh, that wouldn't come up again um, um, be, to make sure the, uh, the, that the maintainers learn from it, that they are bypassed if they are not acting quickly enough. Um, on, on the summit he said uh, he, he got, got it, made his piece, it's my words, not his, um, um, to, with that and uh, expect that might be ha happen uh, f uh, a bit more often in the future. And um, maybe, maybe that's, that's needed, Rema remains to be seen. So um, I already had also considered doing a Git tree with all uh, fixes that are, are queued and uh, not mainlined or sitting on a list and that got it, not getting reviewed or, or, or uh, reverts for, for uh, that subsystems don't apply. I guess that will come to that. I really try to avoid it, but uh, it will make it, um, <coughs> it's likely needed. Yeah, but in the end, uh, the the most most problems I see are basically reviewing, committing uh, fixes, and sending them to Linux. And there are multiple issues why that happens. Um, uh, it just takes the subsystems too long there. Um, so, but to, before that, um, why is it a bad thing? And in those five weeks or six weeks, depending on, on how it is, um, it might block CI systems from running, from doing their work and mask other bugs or prevents users from, from testing and ma also mask bugs. And multiple people ru might run into, uh, into the same regression and bisect it for, and to take hours to bisect only to find out that uh, um, the fix is uh, already exis exist and it's just not mainlined. That's quite annoying. I had, I had that a few times myself. That's uh, uh, way earlier than when I was not tracking regression. That's really annoying, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, that's why it's important to get those fixes quite quickly into. Yeah, and the reasons why, why this happens, one of them is, for example, that some sus subsystem just lack the work for, uh, for us to uh, commit and. Uh, uh, review on mainline faster, especially the smaller ones. Um, uh, there's obviously no easy answer how to fix it. Uh, I just want to point it out. Maybe it's at that point it's good to seek help any, uh, anyway, but it's obviously easier said than done because some sus subsystems are that small and nobody cares that's how it is. But for the bigger ones, I think that's a problem. Um, there's also a problem I frequently see that some sub sub subsystems um, see no urgency with the regressions that I think they are sometimes too far away from Linux um, to, to feel the pressure he normally act, uh, puts on, on maintainers to, to uh, get regressions quickly fixed. And uh, I really hope that uh, things improve there o over time. Um, so sub sub subsystems, as I said, that's likely for example uh, the NetTree has a few sub subsystems, and um, uh, um, some some act quite differently for two regressions than the net maintainers himself, themselves. And um, but I don't want to point out them here. Uh, th those are just an example. There are other other subsystems or sub subsystems where it's a problem as well. Yeah. And another workflow, pro workflow problem I see is that um, submitted regression fixes often look like any other patch on the list. That's uh, one of the reasons why they are not, uh, hand not uh, handled uh, more urgently, but because it's not obvious that they are fixing regression. And a attack in the, in the, uh, in the subject could, could help there. And uh, maybe we get find some improvements there over time remains to be seen. <coughs> Another uh, problem I frequently see that some maintainers 
Um, just uh, uh, don't want to send any pull requests to Linux uh, with just one fix or something, or ask him to pick up a fix straight from the list, but Linus m multiple times made clear he's totally fine with that, that's how it is, and he w uh, really prefers that uh, to get the fix in, even if it's just with a uh, pull request with one fix, or even if he uh, is asked to pick, to pick up the fix straight from the list, unless that becomes the norm, um, that's totally fine for him, yeah. Another work pro pro problem I see is that some maintainers uh, send their pull requests shortly after a new mainline RC, RC release. That way, uh, uh, even if uh, um, really uh, kernel developers or many testers are, are just using the, the git, git tree of the days, but we have quite a few testers that use the RC test, uh, the RC releases, and so it really w is good, uh, would be good and help a lot of people to get those in there. Um, with, for example, one subsystem that leaves um, uh, fixes in, in next, uh, sometimes for a week, or often for a week or more, and then often sends um, um, pull requests on Mondays, that way uh, their fixes often miss two RCs, and uh, during that time I see other people reporting the regressions again, that's kind of, kind of not, not great. Yeah. As I said, um, leaving things in next is also not w one of those workflow problems, uh, but we discussed this on, on the summit, as I said earlier, so maybe it would, would get better. Another thing is um, um, when the uh, fix, uh, uh, when the report is getting in quite late, uh, then some subsystems uh, uh, um, are, are unsure if they should send it to Linux, um, but um, I think being careful obviously is important, but sometimes um, it's better to send it to Linus or just uh, 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 defer the regression uh, the decision to him. That's actu actually fine for him as well. Yeah. And um, then there are also the issues that uh, uh, commits that never made it to Next. Uh, a lot of people think that's not okay to send them to Linux, um, but he totally made, made clear that's also fine that to send fixes in Next unless it's something where, where time in Next is really something uh, that uh, would be good. So the, the example got com more and more complicated during the talk. Let's reset it to the one-week example and uh, uh, to discuss a few other things. Uh, reports is also a kind of a workflow, workflow, problem, uh, workflow problem because people just don't know how to report uh, a problem. There's the Baxilla, uh, which is kind of semi-official. And um, we're also sent seeing a lot, I see also see a lot of people that uh, report mainline problems to the stable list because something is not stable or something. And there are some improvements would be needed, uh, but that's uh, not easily done, especially with the Baxilla situation, but uh, sooner or later we'll find something there. And um, another problem I uh, don't see, actually, is that uh, debugging a, a fix, uh, uh, debugging the issue and preparing a fix, that of, of often just works. Um, um, not all the time, uh, but most of the time, developers are actually quite, uh, quite capable of uh, qu quickly creating fixes or reverts to, to resolve the issue. It's only afterwards that things become problematic, from my point of view, most of the time. They're all, as always, they're, they're, we couldn't generalize here everything. It always depends on the, on the situation. Um, but uh, what is a problem is actually that people try for weeks uh, debugging an issue and um, trying to find a fix when a revert is possible, and sometimes they take it uh, out uh, way long till RC7. At that point, it sometimes becomes too late to revert a, a fix, uh, a revert a commit to fix a regression because then that becomes dangerous. Um, there, that's uh, also something that where I hope uh, uh, what Linus said will, uh, will improve the situation. Let's reset the example again back to the, to, to the one-week uh, thing, uh, one-week ex uh, example, and uh, there also, to, to give another problem, that um, if the, the, uh, the culprit for the regression is only, uh, is from an earlier merge window, like RC9, RC when we are in the RC10 development, um, that uh, some developers then queue the fix for the next merge window, and also leads to delay, uh, just like it happened with, with something that uh, is one year old. As I said earlier, with the example uh, from the mail uh, from Linux, that's normally not wanted. Uh, normally, it's a, a straightforward fixes should go right into the current cycle. So 
The example gets more and more complicated. Sorry for that, uh, but uh, it's needed uh, to, to um, actually describe it, the various issues. And you can find the details later in the slides if you want them. And um, um, now it's uh, back for, for a, a little bit compressed. And um, um, uh, um, for, for issues that uh, are happening uh, in the, in the uh, one-week scenario, uh, we have another workflow problem that um, no elevated uh, the handling is performed for, for regressions that recently made it into a new mainline release that's also hopefully getting to get better by the guidelines uh, we I write uh, after this conference, after what we discussed uh, in the last past few days. <coughs> Just like... Um, um, uh, <coughs> yeah. Another problem we have is that um, um, the, f the fixes tax and the CC tax um, that um, developers, um, uh, th that quite a few um, uh, uh, commits are missing this. Uh, the fixes tax, are, uh, for example, sometimes are just missing because they're forget forgotten. That's sometimes an annoying. But another reason is that people don't know how to use fixes tax properly. We ha recently had even a, a discussion on case summit list where, uh, uh, so with the core maintainers, even there was some disagreement how to, to use the fixes tax in case uh, one uh, commit uh, caused the um, regression, but a later commit only exposed it, uh, what, what uh, commit the fixes tax should actually point to. And uh, there are also uh, some, some uh, uh, guidelines hopefully should, should uh, improve this situation. Uh, there are also uh, another workflow problem is that we have uh, whole subsystems like the XFS and BcacheFS um, developers that opted out of stable backporting. Uh, recently, um, that can cause um, subsystems um, that uh, can lead to issues that uh, fixes then are not backported if the stable release is uh, stable tag is forgotten, which recently we had for XFS. Uh, um, commit that even uh, fixed the uh, corruption issue that caused a, reg uh, a regression with a corruption issue. Luckily, that was caught and uh, fixed there. Yeah. Uh, but one thing here, everything up to now, uh, to the previous slide, was basically about mainline. Uh, I want to get a little bit into the stable long-term story, even if, if it's op optional, because there are also workflow issues there. For example, if uh, um, a, a commit makes it into a new RC1 and is then backported to a, uh, to a kernel and it's causing aggression then in both mainline uh, and, and the stable, then as I said, uh, people sometimes report this to the, to the wrong list that leads to delays. It's, it's annoying, but uh, yeah. And another problem is that uh, mainline developers sometimes don't care about these issues because they think it might be something the, the stable tree maintainers caused and uh, that also needs to leads to delays that uh, because uh, the report that net needs to retest with mainline, which some are incapable of, and that's uh, also an, another annoying problem. As I said, many small issues are coming to, together there, like the stable tags, which are op optional, um, even, even, even if... Um, if developers know uh, a um, uh, fix made it, was backported to a stable release or made it to a, to a new stable series to, through a mainline re release, even then they are not uh, uh, forced to, to uh, ensure that a stable tag is there to, and, and, uh, and uh, to make sure the, the fix is backported. We're getting to the end slowly. And... Um, there are also another workflow issue that uh, some main mainline developers assume that the fixes tag is enough to, to, uh, for the stable team to fix this uh, fix uh, um, commits uh, fix to pick fixes up. Sorry, uh, it often is, but it's basically unreliable um, because the stable team might silently drop um, uh, patches if they don't apply. Uh, so it's really complicated. Yeah, and. Um, it's even more complicated when the, the fix is backported. And um, um, uh, as I, I already had that, um, 
uh, mentioned earlier, if if something um, is um, um, is committed to um, uh, to the to mainline for RC1 and causes issues there and it's backported, then the mainline developers think, hey, they can wait till RC6 or later to fix this. Um, but if it was backported, it caused issues in stable for weeks, and that's obviously annoying for everyone. And um, uh, and it's then in that case not even not fixed in stable in the stable uh, tree because uh, as long as the same uh, commit hap uh, um, causes the same issue in, in mainline, uh, Greg says, okay, fix this in mainline quickly. Then I'm I'm taking the backport. And uh, I can understand why he's doing it like that, but obviously it causes issues, and uh, we need to get uh, the mainline developers to fix this more quickly if it uh, um, um, uh, hits a stable tree. Uh, the thing is, recently Greg even re uh, uh, backported a change that was known to cause the regression. I think it was a security fix or something, yeah. I have a wish list. Um, I don't need to go into the details here. I'm leaving it in the slides for everyone that cares. It, uh, with guidelines, there are actually some guidelines in the in the uh, tree already, um, but it basically covers all the stuff I, I already mentioned here and to to bring bring uh, things more to, to uh, slipstream things and uh, make sure regressions are fixed more quickly. And that's it. It took quite a while. Sorry. Hopefully it was not too fast, yeah. Hey, um, <clears throat> we're getting towards uh, the break time, but we'll have time for maybe two quick questions, if there are any questions. Somewhat radical suggestion. Um, you can tell from the fixes tag how long ago a, reg a, 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 a regression was introduced. Possibly if a regression was not introduced re uh, relatively recently, but the fix has landed in the merge window, it should automatically be put off stable application for, say, a week, just so we can tell it doesn't introduce worse problems. And how do you know it's not a security fix that is urgent? Maybe there should be a tag to indicate that something is a security fix. And thing. how do you make uh, all the developers tag something when they don't have to care about stable? Is <laughs> it, isn't it a security fix if something explodes people's systems? It's a denial of service attack at the very least. Uh, it's <laughs> just how it is. We have, have to deal with that. And uh, stable is optional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One more question? Ah, all right. So uh, Stephen pulls for next, right? And there's a established sort of process for that with people having trees and branches that he pulls from. Um, to avoid the whole batching and pushing of fixes to Linux, has there been any talk about some sort of standard people having a fixes branch that somebody else can harvest and just collect and send up? Instead of having everybody remembering to doing it Do once You mean a, week? a fixes branch just for regression fixes? Um, do a pulled version, pulled version where you know, as long as you have the negotiated subscribe to, you know, this tree has a fixes branch with this name, somebody can just go and pull those daily and um, the set them up. Steven, there are quite a few subsystems have for next and fixes branches. There's even in, in the next tree is a, um, a branch that's called pending fixes or something. So if you basically want to get the fixes that are cute in, in trees that are um, uh, sooner or later, or, or, or sooner rather than later, are meant to go to Linux during the current merge window. You can uh, just pull that that tree already, that branch, and yeah. everything is. Yeah. That's what is meaning like having a. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a that, policy where people do that. that yeah, that, that, that was actually discussed at the yeah. maintainer summit, which was a recommendation that uh, more subsystems, ideally all subsystems, have a fixes branch yeah. because Stephen yeah. will. Yeah you know, take the fixes branch first to create the pending fixes, um, and... How do you do that send it to Linux? Well, so I think it, once we have a fixes branch, then the next step would be to encourage folks to more aggressively send the fixes branch to Linux ahead yeah. of time. And yeah. so, yeah, that was discussed. Again, that's one of these wish list items for the maintainers to pick up, uh, and we'll be trying to corral folks to do that. Yeah, so it's a good suggestion. It was discussed, so yeah. And, and partly already done. Some sub subsystems do that already, yeah. We just need more subsystems to do that, yeah. Yeah, and to be fair, I suspect some systems didn't even know that yeah. that was an yeah. option, yeah. right? Definitely. So there's education that's needed. Yeah. All right, um, we're into the break, so uh, thank you all very, very much.
Uh, and we will start again in uh, 25 minutes. Okay.